Jana. Welcome back. So this week we're doing the decreases um, to close up the top of the mitten and we're also going to pick up the thumb stitches and knit those. So it will look like this. So what I want to say about that is on the pattern you'll notice where it tells you how far up your mitten to knit just straight round and round before you begin the decreases. If you're knitting this for someone in your house it might be a good idea to actually try it on. Um, I did that. I tried it on both of my daughters actually and I found that um, it was way too tall the the size that I was doing just had it being way too tall and so I actually tore out I ripped out about a hmm, it was probably between three eighths and a half inch um, and then I started the decreases so the decreases in total when I, for the pattern that I made the beginning of the decreases here and this is the ending and that's maybe an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch. So obviously it's gonna vary depending on how many stitches that you have. I'm just saying if you have the opportunity to try it on somebody, it's, you know, you might do that. It's not a big deal if your mitten's a little bit floppy at the top and it has a little extra, it's not a big deal. Um, same with the thumb. So mine turned out like this and I'll show you how I accomplished that. And then after we, after I show you the ending of this mitten, I'll show you how to plan where you're gonna put the color work for the left-hand mitten. So this is the right, right? This is the right-hand mitten. You wanna make sure you do the left hand in such a way that you don't end up with the snowflake on the palm, unless of course that's what you want. All right, let's get to it. We're ready to start the decreases. And if you look at your pattern at the top of page three, it says, um, we're going to do a setup round and basically all that is is you're knitting halfway and placing a marker So if you're using magic loop like I am you're just knitting across one side and placing a marker is all that she's wanting you to do so I'm not going to place a marker because I already know that this is halfway now if you were doing a one circular or you were doing um, maybe double pointed, you might want to place a marker halfway across just so that you can know where the, the halfway point is. Um, but I don't really need to do that since I already have my stitches divided in half. So I'll leave that up to you whether you want to do the setup row or not. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go to round one. So we're going to begin the decreases here and round one just says knit one, slip, slip, knit. So we're going to knit the first stitch just like normal. And then an SSK means slip, slip, knit. And the way I do that, there's many ways you can do that, but what I prefer is you slip as if to knit, slip the stitch off as if to knit, and then you go in underneath with your left hand needle and then knit those off. Now, you can, alternatively, you can just knit two stitches through the back loop and it will do the same thing. It looks slightly different, the difference is negligible. So if that's your preference, that's totally fine. Um, so then you're going to knit to three stitches before the marker, or in my case, that's just three stitches before this, the end of this first needle here. Then we're going to simply knit two together, being careful not to split a stitch, knit two together. Now I'll do that slowly if you're new to this. You just go in and put your needle, right hand needle through both of those and knit them together, and then knit one. Okay, now you're gonna turn your work. All right. And you're gonna do that same thing. So that's what they're saying on round one is you knit the, the instructions between those brackets twice, which in my case is just knitting the second needle the same exact way I just did the first. So let me show you that slip, slip, knit, decrease again. Slip as if to knit, slip as if to knit, I go in underneath like that and knit those two together. And then knit across till you get to three stitches before the end. And then we're gonna knit two together. Knit one. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. So we have finished the first decrease round. By doing so, we've decreased one stitch at each end of each needle. So that means we have decreased four stitches in total on that round. So now if you look back at your instructions for whichever size you're knitting, we are going to do that same decrease round, however many number of times it is indicated until you have, in my case, eight stitches remain. So we're gonna just continue to do that until we have eight stitches left in total. So in my case, that will be four stitches on each half. 
And now all I'm going to do is pull the cable through. I'm gonna follow the instructions and cut or break my yarn about six inches from the end. Then I'm gonna thread my darning needle here, tapestry needle, whatever you happen to have. And then all I'm going to do is go in underneath all of these, slip them off as if to purl, so as not to twist them. I'm gonna do this all the way around. Turn that over. Move. The cat's annoyed with me. Obviously she is <clears throat> not moving and thrashing her tail because I'm in her space, apparently. So I'm just threading the tail in through all of the live stitches and then I'm gonna draw them up tight just as if it were a purse string. Okay, now the way I like to secure this, okay, maybe she'll leave now. The way I like to secure this is to simply go in underneath. If you can thread these, thread your needle in underneath the stitch, the same stitches that you worked a moment ago. And I, so that means you're going, basically you're just circling around twice. So the first time is when we took it off the needle and the second time is just now. And I like to do that as a means to secure it a little bit better. Okay, and then I pull that tight and then the way I go down, straight down through the center, being careful not to catch any stitches on the inside. And I'll go ahead and turn this inside out. Being careful not to uh, poke the needle through anywhere. Okay. And then I pull that, pull that on through so now I can see it. Give that a good little tug. And then I pick a spot that's unobtrusive to go in underneath one more time. Leave just a tiny little bit of a tail there. And then I go back in so I'm basically just tying a little knot. Okay, tighten that on up. Let me thread the needle once again, okay? And then all of these purl stitches, I'm just gonna pick one row of those to weave in my tail end. I go ahead and I'll just do this right away. Okay. All right. Now I know that's done. And I'll go ahead and trim this fairly closely. Okay, now you can, since you're here, you can take the opportunity to weave all that in if you like. I'm gonna do that later so that I can go ahead and show you how we're going to pick up the gusset stitches for the, or pick up the thumb stitches. Oh, now does not look good. Nice, nice. Okay, so back to our pattern. We want to place the held stitches back on the larger needle, which is what we've been using. So what I'm going to do, I like to go in from the right side. So I'm just gonna give that a little tug and, and get my, my waist yarn up here. Now I like to just kind of pull this up a little bit. And that helps widen out my stitch a little more. I'm gonna go in under, trying not to split any of them. You might have to do them one at a time. Oh, goodness. Okay, I go in under a few and I go ahead and pull out my waist yarn as I go. Okay, I think the cat's gonna have to go. There we go. I think possibly the camera was trying to focus on the cat and not what I'm doing. That's not gonna work. All right, I've got all my stitches back on the needle. I put half on each side and then I'm going to knit one round. I'm gonna attach my main color yarn here. And actually, I'm not gonna really attach anything. I'm, um, I'll show you how I'm going to add that on. Right now, I'm just gonna start knitting with it. And then I will, I'm leaving a significant tail, probably six inches or so. Um, and I'm just gonna start knitting with it. And I'll show you how I'm gonna secure that when I get back around to the inside portion of the thumb. But right now, I've kind of got that pinned, the tail in, I have it pinned under my middle finger and I'm just to create some tension so I can begin knitting without it being you know, really loose and, and awkward and floppy. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and knit one time around. Then the pattern indicates that you're gonna have kind of a hole 
on the finishing portion at the bottom of the page, it says there will be a small hole at the base of the thumb. Well, we're gonna try to prevent that. Um, so if you've already knitted a head and you went ahead and did it the way they did and you sewed that up, then that's totally fine. You can do it that way. I'm gonna, I hate sewing up holes. And so I'm gonna see if I can prevent that. So I'm gonna do my second half here with the, uh, my magic loop. I'm gonna see if I can prevent the hole by picking up an extra stitch or two on the inside where we joined. So sometimes the hole happens on the inside of the thumb gusset where the thumb meets the body of the mitten. So we'll see if we can pick up a couple extra stitches there and accommodate that. If not, if my method doesn't work so good and we still have a hole, then that's another reason for leaving that five or six inches of a tail so that you can use that to cinch that up. So we'll see. All right, so I'm back around to where I picked that up. Now, this white thing right here is where we carried the float around. Okay, these white stitches under here are simply the inside where we carried the float around. So I'm gonna try to cover that as well when I pick up stitches here, extras. So on the back side, I'm gonna pull my magic loop through and I'm gonna get ready to knit I think what I wanna do before that, I'm kinda of fumbling around here deciding what I'm gonna do. I wanna be able to cover, I'm gonna pick up, all right, if I hold this, let me show you. If I hold this so that it closes right here, I want to pick that up and make it a stitch and maybe one of these other main color stitches as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this one and pick that up and make that a stitch and I think I'm also going to do one more right there. So actually, since here's my working yarn, I need to put those onto my left needle so that I can just knit them. So I'll try to orient them correctly so that they're, or, you know, with the proper leg forward so that they look like knit stitches. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just knit those. And I'm not gonna pull real tight. I want them to be uh, a little bit loose and fluffy so they'll cover, cover that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pull that down and make them join my other side of my thumb. All right, this is super awkward, bear with me. Now I wanna do the same thing over here, I think. So I'm gonna choose one maybe right there to become a new stitch and right here. And that one is backwards, so I'm gonna knit into the back of it. And, by the way, this is my tail from before, so we'll deal with that in a second, just trying to get that out of the way. Now I'm gonna give that a, tight, a good little tug because I don't want a ladder and I'm trying to draw that hole closed. So basically, I've picked up two stitches I have added. Now, this, this stitch is where we began. So I'm gonna hold that together. In fact, at this point, you could tie a little square knot right here if you wanted to, to make this secure. And I think I'm going to because it, a mitten for kids in my case, you know, they're playing outside. It's gonna go through the washing machine potentially. I'm gonna go ahead and tie a little square knot right there. We can still use this tail to sew up any holes that might occur, but hopefully we have minimized the chance of that. All right, so now we're back to where the pattern says is the beginning of the round. So we, it says knit every round until the thumb measures however length from where you pick those up. So I am gonna knit every round, but what I'm gonna do the next time around is I'm going to decrease those stitches I picked up. I'm gonna decrease those away. Um, otherwise I'm gonna have a really wide thumb. And you know, that's probably not a crisis either. But in the same way that we decreased for the top of the mitten, I'm gonna decrease these. Okay, I want this first decrease, when I'm going back toward the body of the mitten, I want this decrease to lean to the left. So I'm going to knit until I have two stitches left and I'm gonna do a slip slip knit so that it leans toward the left or toward the body of the mitten. I think that will, that will work out. Now I do have some of that lighter colored yarn poking through and it may end up because I've 
pulled these up to mitigate any holes. It may end up that I need to um, use my tail end to weave over those and hide them better. Um, but I would rather do that than have a hole, honestly. Holes irritate me. Um, so I'd probably rather do that than and hide those lighter colored yarn spots than have a hole. So I'll probably take my tail in and just weave over those and hide them as part of my finishing here. So now this one, I want it to lean toward the body of the mitten also. So I want to do a right leaning increase, which will be a knit two together. So just then I've knitted, I have decreased away half of the stitches that I added and now I'm going to knit around again. And I'm going to decrease, when I get back to the body of the mitten, I'm gonna decrease away. I'm gonna do the same thing I just did and decrease two stitches again, the two that I picked up on each needle the first time. Then I'm just gonna knit around and around until the thumb is the length that I want. Okay, now this one again, I'm gonna do a slip, slip, knit. And I'm back to my original number of stitches after I do that one more time on this side. And then I'm gonna knit my thumb up for another, looks like two inches for me. So just gotta make sure you have your yarn going on the right, correct side of the magic loop. Oh, see there, I got started talking, forgot what I'm doing. There's my other decrease, knit two together. And I'm giving that a good little tug to tighten it up. And now I'm just gonna knit around and around and around until the desired length of the mitten, or sorry, desired length of the thumb. Then we'll do our decrease round and tight cinch everything up. I've knitted this to the length that I want and now I'm gonna do knit two together all the way around to decrease very quickly the number of stitches I have, and then I'll do the same thing that I did before, where I break off the yarn and circle through, weaving it, you know, weaving it through with my darning needle and drawing it up, tying it off and weaving it back down through the end, like just like we did at the very top. Um, I actually didn't measure the thumb. I put it on my daughter, who will be wearing these mittens, and her thumb came right to the end and we decided it was time to close it up. So what I'm going to do to make sure that the left one matches the right is I will actually count the number of rows that I've knitted from the where I picked up the stitches at the base of the thumb gusset. So I will actually count the number of rows that I have and make sure that the neck mitten number two is knitted the exact same number of rows. So I'll carry on knitting these together Okay, now same as before, I've cut my yarn five or six inches from the end and threaded my darning needle here. And I'm just threading the end, tail end through all my stitches here. All right, same as before, we're just going all the way around. And then I'm gonna turn this over and I'm gonna, th I'm gonna thread my needle through around again, go inside and tie it off, same as I did before. This is a little bit fiddly to turn this inside out now with the thumb, but I'm actually gonna turn the whole entire mitten inside out um, because I'm also gonna take the tail end. Remember where I, the tail end was where I attached the yarn to begin knitting the thumb? I'm gonna take that and see what I can do about um, covering up those these stitches here. And then I'm also gonna take the time to weave, weave in my other ends, being careful not to allow that this, when I weave this in, I wanna be very careful to just go on the inside, up and down on the inside, and being careful not to poke my darning needle through too much so that it shows on the outside of the mitten. We don't want that. So I'll go ahead and tie this off, and then we'll go from there. All right, I went around and around, and I drew that up, and then I put it on the inside, and I tied it off and wove it in, same as we did the top. So I think that's looking pretty good. So. Now, what I want you to consider is this is this is the right hand, okay? So if I hold this like this, this is obviously my right hand. Now, the beginning of the round for us was here, and as indicated in the, in the pattern, we started our thumb gusset at the beginning of the round. 
So if we choose to continue, the, if we want to make the color work on the back of the left hand, so we'd have to visualize this, what we want to do, what I'm going to do for the left hand now, is go ahead and knit the thumb gusset in the same way following the directions of the pattern and then right after the marker, I'm going to begin my color chart right at the marker. So I'll show you that. All right, so now this is going to be the left mitten. I have the right one here. This is going to be the left one and I've knitted the cuff. I've done the four rows of straight stockinette stitch and now I'm beginning at the top of page two with the setup round for the thumb gusset. So I'm gonna make one, I'm gonna make that left leaning increase from the cable, just like before, and I'm grabbing up the leg of this lower stitch. So I'll link the left leaning increase up at the top right hand corner of this video if you need some help learning to do that. So this is the left leaner, I'm gonna knit this. This is the beginning of the round. And then that's the make one. And now we're gonna knit one and we're gonna make one. This is the right leaning increase where we grab the leg below, put it up on the left needle and knit right into that. And then we'll place our marker. Let me get my marker here. And knit to the beginning of the round, knit all the way, the rest of the way around. So just then we've increased two stitches. Okay, again, we're at the top of page two and we're gonna begin the color chart on rounds round one which is a plain knitting round as far as increasing is concerned, but that's where we're going to begin the color chart. So if we take a look at the right and the left, when we began the right hand mitten, we did the color work on needle number two. Needle number one is where we have the thumb gusset and before we did the color chart on needle two. This time we're gonna be doing the color chart right after the marker. So it needs to be on the same needle as the gusset for it to be, for you to have a right and left mitten, right? So let me finish knitting through this and then we'll begin our color chart. Same as before, only this time on the other needle. All right, so I'm on round one and I've knitted, just knitted across to the marker and this is a plain knitting round as is round one and two both. And I'm starting my chart where the marker is. So I'm knitting the 12th stitch. So I'm gonna begin the chart right at the marker. So two, four, six, eight, nine. And then you're gonna start the chart just as we did before. So just pretend like the marker is the edge of your chart. And then this is the first stitch of your chart and you're working your thumb gusset between here increasing every third round until you have the prescribed number of stitches between the beginning of the round and your marker. So everything is the same as before, it's just a different placement of where the chart, of where we're having the chart, but everything else is exactly as the previous video. Okay, you can see I'm increasing every third round on my thumb gusset stitches and I've got the chart going here, so I'm just gonna carry on like I have been, increasing the thumb gusset stitches every third round and continuing on with my chart, just like we did before. And it's just the different placement, like I mentioned, it's just a different place, placement of where we're putting the motif, that's all. Okay, so continue knitting your color work chart, knit all the way up, and then just complete the decreases and pick up your thumb stitches and do all that the same way you did for the first mitten. All right, as always, I always appreciate your comments, like and subscribe down below, and feel free to join the Facebook and the Ravelry group and holler if you have any questions. All right, thanks for watching.